Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Alex Thomas Show. I'm here with some special guests, uh, Attorney uh, Webster Cox and also a Miss Dixon. And we're here to speak about uh, uh, just a terrible incident that happened last April 26. And, um, you know, I, I guess I think I'll, I'll allow each of you to introduce yourselves first, and, and then we'll get to the events of the 26th. Uh, Miss Dixon, welcome. Hi, my name is Marquia Dixon. Thank you for uh, thank you for uh, appearing, and uh, Attorney Webster Cox. Yes, hi there. My name is Dion Webster Cox. I am the attorney for Miss Dixon and her son, who um, were involved in a horrible incident that occurred. That actually, was April sixteenth, uh, two thousand twenty-one. I know that because that was my birthday. So um, it was April 16th at the Briarwood Mall. I am an attorney and I focus on social justice, civil rights litigation. Well, thank you. Uh, who would like to just tell us what happened on April 16th? Um, Ms. Dixon, would you like to share? Um, sure. Um, I had got, just had got off work. Um, I got a phone call from my son and he called and he told me, he said, mom, you're going to have to come get me, but I can see, I can see something wasn't right in his face. And I, my heart instantly just dropped. And I'm like, what's wrong? You know, what happened? And he was like, oh, my dad got pulled over. And I'm like, what? I'm like, where are you at? And he was like, um, I don't know. And then the police officer got on the phone. He was like, mom, he's here. He's okay. You don't have to rush, but you do have to rush to get here. I'm like, well, what's going on? They're like, well, you know, just get here. I'm like, okay. So I had um, rushed over there, and when they got when I got there, they had the dad in handcuffs, and he was standing there, and my son was just standing there waiting on me to get there with a police officer. And excuse me, Ms. Dixon, and where was this? Where where were you at? When you, we were when you in, up here on Street. Yes. And um, when I got there. My son was just standing there with another officer. And then I'm like, you know, asking what happened. And they was like, um, well, you know, we had started chasing him at Briarwood Mall because we thought that he was a shooter. And I was lost because at the time I didn't hear about the shooting yet at Briarwood Mall. So, you know, and they, you know, kept on telling me what happened and what was going on. But at the whole time, I didn't know what was going on either. I didn't know that they had handcuffed my son. I didn't know none of this. So I had got my son and left and, you know, and then they had let the father go, you know, and he called me and he was like, you know, I was acting up and doing this because they had handcuffed Benji. And I'm like, what? That's when I first le learned that they had handcuffed my son. They didn't tell me that they had handcuffed my son. They didn't tell me none of this stuff. Well, from the story that I saw in Click on Detroit, uh, just uh, the handcuffing, uh, just the whole traumatizing event, other things. Um, uh, Attorney uh, Webster Cox, maybe would you like to just a bit, because it was just not only handcuffing, uh, maybe could, could you share exactly what did happen, the actions of the Oh, actually, Township? if you'd like to see, I've got the video up. If okay. that would help. Okay, and we can see part of it. I mean, I won't take you through the entire part of all of it, but I can take you through that the unedited version, not the version that the news put out that just wanted to minimize he was only in handcuffs for 1.40 uh, seconds, the whole ordeal that happened to this young man. So we can start there by what the truth, what the cameras capture, and we'll be able to hear it and see it. No, what can you see? What we right now what we see is an officer just driving. Keep in mind, there's already Ann Arbor police on the scene, so he's a he's a he's an add-on. And this uh, was that this is Pittsfield Township, right? Put the phone down now. Shit. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Put the phone down. Put the phone down. Put the phone down. Stand up, okay? Stand up. You're good. Stand up, I got you. Hey, you're good, you're good. All right, stand up, I got you. You're gonna be okay. Stand up, I got you. I'm gonna detain you for right now, okay? Let me get every form and set out the ground to break, all right? Are you okay? It's fine, these come off just as easy, all right? Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Sorry, now we got to detain you. 
Okay. You're okay. Right? Who's in the car with you? Your dad. Okay. Do, do you know why he took off running? You know why you took off running? No. Okay, so now here we go. Now he's got him in handcuffs. Now he's questioning him. Why are you questioning him without his parent being being present? Mm -hmm. Why did mm -hmm. you even put those handcuffs on him? Okay, why was that even necessary? Why would you have him sit down then stand up? That's what's wrong. That's what's wrong. And then now you're asking, do you know why? Do you know this? No. All that, if, if that father was involved in a felony, the very first thing was supposed to happen, CPS was supposed to be called. So we're going to follow the rules. Let's follow all the rules. Not just pick and choose the rules that you want to follow. And mm -hmm. secondly, where was your, where, what was your safety? Are you going to give him back his phone? If you are so concerned about your safety, if you're going to, they say sometimes, hey, a person may run away. Well, if you're going to run away, you didn't check his feet if you were so concerned about certain things. So what? sometimes what they want to downplay say, oh, or want to upplay and say, oh, it's officer safety. You weren't concerned about officer safety. You were, you felt comfortable when you had him sit on that ground. Definitely felt comfortable when you had to plead, when you had your guns drawn on him. Felt very comfortable. Felt very comfortable when he was in handcuffs. Felt even more comfortable because you wanted to uh, question him about what was going on. It seems just... confusing to me, um, and, and and further traumatizing in the the the, the passive aggressive nature of the the questioning. Like, are you okay? Are you while I'm handcuffing you? <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then question it, it was it, it just just it just traumatized. And, uh, Absolutely, and so I'll take it off of um I'll take it because it just from there it goes. Well, you want to call your mom? It goes further, but I think those initial moments and just like I said, I want to take it off a of screen share. So somehow I can figure out how to do that real quick. Uh, that'd be great. Okay. Very good. Thank you. So and so you saw it. You saw what happened, mm -hmm. and that young man was traumatized and he was scared. I don't care. Okay, I'm okay. He wasn't okay. Who's okay? Grown men, grown women aren't okay in a situation like that. You know, I, I've done a lot of work and I, in the community, and that's how I came across on the coins of uh, Mike Henry, but with our prosecutor's office and in criminal justice. Um, I, I worked with uh, Liberate, Don't Incarcerate, was uh, uh, a prison abolitionist group. And in one of those uh, organizing forums, I think one of the questions was, what were some of my, my first thoughts of the police and my first memories of the police? And I'm 52 and I can remember as a child, uh, those Fisher Price toys where there's like a, a dog and then there's a cop. And <laughs> I had a positive idea of police as a youth. And it wasn't until, and then I actually, I played uh, football for uh, the, our county team and it was all Washington County sheriffs. When I was 13 and 14, they were all African-American too. I was actually considered at that age, 13 or 14, I was thinking about law enforcement. But my teenage years and being profiled and having my uh, you know, car searched, uh, Pittsfield as, as a teenager, Pittsfield Township with their gigantic dogs <laughs> and searches. Have, I've had my, car, I had my car searched three or four times by Pittsfield police during that time. Um, but my experience, uh, as a teenager, being racially profiled, uh, and just uh, that—that's what informed my uh, view on our present criminal justice system and the reason uh, for for change. And uh, incidents like this can't be tolerated. We can't have uh, uh, children, black youth, that are, like indoctrinated with this adversarial role towards the police. Um, we everyone wants public safety. Uh, we, we don't all um, we don't all want uh, uh, law enforcement running amok and violating people's rights like this. But yeah, those are, are, are my thoughts. Things have to change. Absolutely, to change. absolutely. And I think that the more we bring awareness to it, because what we saw is that officer's own his own bias, right? His own implicit bias. And what we also saw was systemic racism going on. And and then what we haven't seen and what we don't want to develop, and this is what we want to prevent, is how the effect that this is going to have on this young man. Because you're right. Most with kids, I want to grow up. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a firefighter, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's what a lot of young children, that's what they want to do because they see them as being the good guys. They see them as being the protectors. Now, what happens when your protector violates you? When your protector, right. when your protector sits up here and dehumanizes you? Now we've got an issue. 
Now, do I hold that in for the rest of my life? And, and am I suspicious of the police? Every police officer? I hope not. But we have to make sure that doesn't happen. We don't. I don't want that to happen this, to this young man. I really don't. I don't want at 15. I don't want that at all. Miss mm-hmm. Dixon, uh, would you? I, I don't want um, our audience just to know you from this incident or this what what transpired. Uh, uh, would, would you like to share a bit, a little bit about yourself in relationship to Ipsy area? Just something. I mean, you've got a sure rich, interesting life. Other than this, and and not letting this one day define anything. Uh, if you could just share a little bit about yourself. Um, I was born and raised in an Arbor Ipsy. So, um, like you said, um, I've, um, I've never seen it like nothing like this happen my whole life. I've never, I went through a lot of things in my life and I have never went through nothing like that. Um, which high school did you go to? I went to Ipsy, Ipsy Lighting High School. Okay. It's a um, Were you um, Grizzlies or um, what was the, the it's, were you a Huron? <laughs> or, nope. you know, the Braves. No, I was Braves. never a Huron. <laughs> <laughs> no, were you a Braves? Was it the Ipsy Braves or the Ipsy Grizzlies when you were there? It was the Ipsy Braves. <laughs> All right. Yes. The football team that I played for was the Ipsy Braves too when I was back in yeah. the, middle, the mid 80s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Please don't um, ask me because I won't. I won't know the name of my high school football <laughs> team or the mascot. I have no idea. <laughs> Miss Miss Webster, are you uh, from the Washington Wayne area, or if you share a little bit about yourself, your yeah, oh, are you from this area? I, well, actually, I grew up in Detroit. I graduated from Cass Tech, Cass Technical High School, and then from there, I went to college. I went to the University of Michigan. So I had a different perspective of Washtenaw County those four years that I was there. I didn't think that, I didn't think anything like this even existed whatsoever. It wasn't until I became an attorney and started practicing in Washtenaw and got to see, um, truly, it's a very, Washtenaw County is pretty conservative. It's not a, um, it's not as liberal as I thought it was at Michigan. It's not liberal at all. In fact, um, it's very conservative. And I think it's very conservative on um, people of color. I think they get it. They get it. The, the you know the brunt of it, to me, from what I've seen as pr- from practicing. I have some things I'd like to share after with you about just the incredible racial disparities in Washington County criminal justice. Um, yeah. I, I I work with our health department um, on a community team, and it just had a lot of access to a lot of different uh, data, uh, and you know, uh, African American youth under sixteen are six times more likely. To be involved in the criminal justice system than the white counterparts in Washington County. Um, Twelve. To, the number one arrest for African Americans in Washington County is uh, obstruction of justice, and obstruction of justice is listed under uh, you know failure to appear for traffic warrants, um, failure to pay fines. So, in my view, crimes of poverty and this right. over policing. But that's the number one arrest for African Americans: obstruction of justice out of these warrants and things from the, I, I believe, over policing. For whites, it's uh, operating under the influence. But uh, there's a 12 times more likely uh, African Americans are in Washington County to have that obstruction of justice charge. It's one of the largest racial disparities. But um, yeah, it's concerns wow. that we're, we're over policed. Absolutely. And that's what we want to prevent. And that's where that's where we have to start now. And that's why this case is so important. And because he is a young man. I, I don't I don't want him to get to that point. I don't want to I don't want him to get to the point where he's out and he gets a ticket. I want him to um I want him to know that um that this is not you don't have to you don't ever have to get a ticket. There means there's so many people go through life, go through their life and never get a ticket for anything. <laughs> they just follow the law. They do all of this, right? So I want him. This is who I want him to be. And I don't want this this incident to to change that. But we have to make sure it doesn't change that. So we have to do some positive reinforcement. And guess what? So does the Pittsfield Police. They've got to do some positive reinforcement, and they've got to be yep. held accountable for the actions of that day. So right now, you know what we've done is we've actually filed a lawsuit, right? A lawsuit has been filed. And it's and it just goes to the excessive force. 
because that was excessive for, for a 11 year old boy. What we know is this, that a child should never be placed in handcuffs unless there, there, unless there is some type of officer safety. So what we saw, that young man was not screaming and hollering. He wasn't jumping all around. He was subdued. He was tame. What was the problem? But what we did hear was sit, lay down, get on the ground. Mm -hmm. We heard all mm -hmm. that. What we saw was a young man following instructions. Directions, yes. So why was that necessary? Why was that necessary? And I don't want, again, the news and both stories, they wanted to minimize because they gave them some Gatorade yeah. and gave them, some, and, and well, the cops were only on, on his hands for uh, one point, one minute and 40 seconds. I don't care. They was, should have never one been. second was too long. One second is too long. Well, a, a one second about a gun pointed at you. It's that too gun. long. Exactly. Gun and two guns. Down. So it's it, no, no, not at all, not at all. I, I can honestly say, I've in all my life, you know, knock on wood and you know, praise God, <laughs> I've never had a gun pointed at me, never. I've had some things. No. Part of the I can remember being um, in, in, as a teenager and having a um, a police officer say, "Don't make me have to shoot you," you know. He didn't have pull out the, but just that comment, you know, just. I you know, it's, uh, you can't tolerate it. Because that's, because you guess what? They, and that's called, that's the assault and that's the battery. That's the assault because he has the present sensibility to do it. He can absolutely, when they pulled out those guns, you don't think that's an assault? Because I know you can't shoot me. I know mm -hmm. I've seen articles where you have shot young people. I've seen you shoot. I saw what you did to Judge George, or George Floyd. I saw what you did to, um, I saw what you did to the other young people. So I know you can do it. This young man is aware of what's out there. He, he's seen the news. So when those ca guns came out, that's an assault. Putting me in, putting him in handcuffs, he can't, he wasn't free to leave. That's false imprisonment. He had the present sense. So with with the lawsuit, what's your what's your what exactly are you asking for and what's your your hope that comes out of it? Well, two, several things. Um, number one, I want for the family, I want for this young man to be compensated. I want for him to be able to have counseling, future counseling, and that costs. That, somebody has to pay for that, right? I want also for there to be changes in the uh, Pittsfield Township Police Department and how they handle the dealings with minors, minors that are calm, minors who, whose parent may be a clown, well, you see that, that that child hadn't done anything. You saw that. And it, when, how do we handle that? Guess what? We don't put them in handcuffs. How about that one? We don't put them in handcuffs. And the minute, because honestly, when we think about it, you don't know who's really coming out of that car. You don't. You really don't know. You don't know if the daddy said, hey, just go for it. You, you don't know that. But once you saw, but it takes a split second to see that, hey, this that was not the case. This young man was cooperating. This young man was... this. That was not the case here. So those guns should immediately have gone down. Should have, mm -hmm. Young man, it's okay. Come on over here. This should have been treated no differently as, as if he were coming out of a fire. Because guess what? It was hot in that car. It was hot with all those, the, the chase. And I wasn't there, but I'm saying the chase, the police officer surrounding, that's hot. So it should be treated no differently if that young man had come out of a fire. You comfort that person. Say, it's okay. It's okay. Come on in here. We're here to protect you. And then they go deal with dad. Speaking of that, I know some audience members uh, that they're probably they want to know the, why did he run? What were those charges? We know that you know he was released, so they can't be uh, uh, they can't have been too severe. But uh, yeah, has he commented as, as to uh, you know why he ran or given any type type of narrative? Has he said anything? Well, you know, we can't speculate as to what was going on in somebody's mind at that time. We we don't know. I don't know. Um, but what we do know is that yes, there were, he did they have warrants with some surprise and they were felony warrants. So there's felony warrants. Why are you letting him go? And why aren't you following the procedure? Why? Because you know what you did to the son was wrong. That's why. That's why. Yeah. Because if you had done everything properly and in, within your procedure that you've defined, that you said that you were following, it that's not the way it goes. That's not the way it goes. You arrest dad, you call CPS, say, mom, listen, come get your son here because there's a problem. Mm -hmm. You don't say, oh, we're going to let you go. 
Yeah. No. For um, people that are just, I'm sure when they hear this, they're going to be outraged and they want to do something. Um, do you have any suggestions or uh, ways to support uh, the case yourself? Just, yeah, what can people do? Well, number one, what they can do is we're, we are having, hopefully, this, we're having a rally on the 27th of June in front of the Pittsfield Township Police Department just to say, hey, this is, we need community support. We need to know, and we need everybody to know, anybody who has a young child, anybody who has a young child needs to come out and say, no, you will not do this to my child. You will not. And we, so we're having something um, probably around about two, two to three um, at the Pittsfield Township Police Department. We'll be out there and we just want the community to come out and just support. That's all we need. That's all we need. Well, I'm definitely planning on being out there, and I and I'll help uh, promote um, uh, the, promote that and, and, and get the word out. Uh, I've just had an issue with Pittsfield Township, as as I said, uh, their police department. They have a, a notorious reputation among the African American community for for a long time, Washington County uh, members. So I'd be um, I, I'd be thrilled to to be out there and, and highlight uh, yeah that history and how we're not going to take it anymore. Absolutely. We can't. We can't. We got to say this is enough is enough. And there's something in sign language. And this is the sign. Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Enough is enough. A police <laughs> brutality, police tyranny is enough. It's enough. And we thought they would have learned something from George Floyd last year, but yeah. it just continues. It's, what more do you need to see? You know, we may ask for uh, other people like, to, to share their stories with Pittsfield because um, just recently over the last six months, I was assisting a, a, a woman. She has some mental health issues and she had been uh, in a homeless shelter. But a couple of years ago, well, like last year, she, um, she was uh, exited from Safe House. And again, she has mental health issues. It was, it was in, in, out of an argument. She was exited. But Pittsfield Township, they, when they picked her up, they bruised her, pulling her out of there. They, uh, they dropped her off at a gas station with her bags. This is from, from, a, uh, you know, from a domestic violence center. They physically uh, bruised her and then just dropped her off at a gas station with garbage bags. You know? And see, oh. now you're taking, a, you're taking a victim, right? You're, you're dehumanizing them even more. And if she turns around and makes anything, then you're going to make her a criminal. You, know, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just a setup. It's an absolute setup. And that's what we can't, there, there are safeguards in place. And if they're not, there needs to be. That what do we do if this person, we know mental illness is nothing new. There are trained professionals that are supposed to know how to handle these situations. So is the, is the answer to the solution to kick them out and then you pick them up, you, you rough them up a little bit, then you take them over to the gas station. What was she supposed to do at the gas station? But but perform some more, you know. She if she's not well, if she's not taking her medication, what's this? That's not the solution. Yeah, it's it's yeah, and I know there's more stories like that, and we, we need that those are that truth to come out because uh, there's this perception that Washington is so progressive and and liberal, and no. um, there's those pockets, but no, that that the, the real story is, is anything but. You know, and I think a big part of it also is uh, at the municipal level. You know, our, our, our county government has declared uh, racism a public health emergency, and they've outlined 10 steps or commitments. Um, one of them is for mi different municipalities to, to, uh, to speak to, to make the same kind of statement and, and, recognize, uh, uh, the, and recognize what a danger racism is. Um, but you're not going to see that on Pittsfield Township's board. Uh, you're not going to see that on Ypsilanti Township's uh, um, website or Superior Township. And, you know, I'm in, uh, in Ypsilanti Township. We're 56,000. Uh, that confuses a lot of people or surprises a lot of people because Ypsi City is t totally separate. It's 21,000 smaller. But w when I think Ypsi, I think Ypsi City, Ypsi Township, uh, Superior Township, like Sycamore Meadows and, and Danbury Green, and also East Pittsfield Township, all the different apartments off Gulfside and such. And, and all those areas, they really don't have 
any type of uh, representation. The, the boards really don't look out in their interest or, or comment. So that's my mm -hmm. interest um, in, 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 in really highlighting that and pressing these local municipalities and, and city councils to do something. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's where we have to get the word out and we, have to, we need people who are not afraid to step up and say, this is my community. I am a part of this community. I, I contribute to this community and I want my voice to be heard and I don't want to be treated any kind of way. I deserve the same amount of, I, I deserve the same respect that you give everyone else. Everyone else of somebody who is, who is Caucasian, someone who is not a person of color. I need that same amount of respect because I am here. I am here. Ms. Dixon, you want to offer um, anything or anything else you want to share before? Because I want to I want to close out and then um, I'm going to uh, promote those dates and uh, yeah, and get the word out. But yeah, if you'd like to share anything before we take off. Um, no. I'm just what, pretty what? much devastated. I just <laughs> it's kind of, you know, weird for me that this is actually going on and happening to me and my child, you know. How is he doing? How is your son doing? He's doing pretty good. He's hanging in there. Uh, Attorney Webster Cox, would you like to uh, say anything before we take off? Absolutely. Come out June 27th. Support us. Support yourself, really, because that's what you're standing up for. You're not just standing up for this 11 year old um, young man. You're, you're standing up for yourself, your family, your nephew, your cousin, your son, your grandson, you're stand, your brother. That's what you're standing up for. You're standing up for just people in general to say this is not going to be accepted, that we are saying no to this. So I'm saying step up, step out. And let's do this. Let's make some change happen. Say, listen, next time you won't do this. This won't happen again. This won't happen again. Not to the young, not to the young people, not to the short people, not to the not to the minors. You won't. Right. You're not gonna be pointing guns at kids. Right. And then talking about you, you okay, you want some great Gatorade. Take your Gatorade. You know what you can do with your Gatorade. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> well. Thanks both of you. And again, I'm going to see you on the, that, that date, the 27th. We're going to spread the word. I really uh, appreciate having both of you here. And uh, I'll see you then on the 27th. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.